what is Urbit? Why does it exist? Does it even work? I'm going to answer exactly those questions in this video. Now, this is a really big topic and there's a lot to cover for it to even begin to make sense. So this is an introductory video. So hopefully it will leave you with more interesting, deeper questions than you came with, but hopefully this will be worth your time. Let's get going. What's the thing that you're most frustrated by with the internet? Is it the surveillance capitalism and the ads that follow you everywhere that you go? Is it the invasion of privacy that all of your communications are open and available to anybody that works at that company? Is it that it's just so busted and it doesn't work? One of the interesting details is that all of those issues have the same root cause. And weirdly, it's because the internet was founded on certain protocols and principles. And there were a lot of decisions made in the early days that made these negative elements of the internet almost inevitable from the start and the root of all of that is i see it are ip addresses and the servers that we use to connect with people on a daily basis because the internet is one of the most incredible human achievements in the history of humanity but those couple tweaks that weren't done quite right at the beginning are starting to show their cracks imagine when we are in person you can see me, I can see you. Then when we hang out the next time, I can see you, you can see me. You know it's me, I know it's you. And it's really easy to know who we are. When we're online, that's nearly impossible to do. That's a really difficult problem to solve. And that's why it takes entire teams of engineers to fix the issue of who am I talking to? So if you want to have a better internet, Basically, the idea is that it can't be saved. It's busted from the lowest levels all the way up for a variety of reasons. And I want to make more videos about those other reasons and the technological angle and a lot more of what that means. But basically, the concept is the Internet can't be saved. We've got to throw it all out and start over. And that's what Urbit is doing. And it's such an ambitious project that it has to address so many different parts of what it means to be able to send a message from me to you. That seems like such a simple thing to get right. But if you're getting rid of all of the Internet, then where do you even begin? And that's what Urbit is doing. So basically, at its simplest, Urbit is a unification of two separate elements. The first is that it's a completely new operating system. Much like a lot of people use Windows, a lot of people use Mac, and nearly every server that runs the internet runs Linux. I once installed Linux on a Mac laptop that I wasn't using anymore. And that was a fantastic way to throw away an entire week of my life. But anyway, Linux, Mac, Windows, those are the three most common operating systems on the planet. And now Urbit is another operating system with a unique difference in that it's kind of like an inception operating system. It will run inside Windows. It will run inside Mac. It will run inside Linux. It doesn't care. And it is just sealed off from that host environment, but it's using some processing power to be its own complete whole computer with added benefits of, oh, I know how to talk to other computers like me. If you have an Urbit server, that server can talk to other Urbit servers directly. And now that you've got this computer that can talk to other computers, it's now a peer-to-peer -peer network that doesn't need any Megacorp to manage a whole server farm 
that allows you to write to a single line in a database, which is kind of what Facebook and Twitter do as it is right now. You don't own that information. You don't own that data. If you want to exit, then they might give you the data, but it's still in a way that you can't use after that. So Urbit is a completely different approach in that it's a server that a human being can own and operate and use to talk to their friends who all have their own servers because that's the only logical conclusion to surveillance capitalism and all the issues that you get from Facebook. And if, if you don't like the algorithm that it doesn't show you your friends or your family and you're mad at that, well, that's a megacorp issue. That's an issue that you've got to figure out if you've got millions of users that are all connected with each other. But if it's you and your friends and your family and, and your ongoing Dunbar number of acquaintances, then you don't really need an algorithm for that. So this allows you to escape algorithm hell as it is too. So it's an operating system that's built on a new computer language that has uh, its own unique kind of computer logic. And if you want to dive into that, then that is a rich treasure trove of information and really cool thinking that goes into the operating system side of what Urbit is. Now, since it's an operating system, it's a whole computer. So there are developers writing programs and applications for Urbit, and more of them are coming out every day because a lot of people think that Urbit is just another social media platform, when really the social media experience of Urbit was the first kind of program that the open source enthusiasts who were helping build Urbit, they were thinking, okay, what would the most people use the most often and be the happiest with having probably having their own groups where they can chat with their friends, shared blogs and notebooks, and maybe a way to keep track of interesting links that they find on the old internet. So that is the element of the Urbit project that is the most built out as it is right now, which that's why people think that it's just another social media platform. But whereas Facebook is giving you access to their server that works the way that it does, and you're just using it as a client, an Urbit OS is a whole computer that you could write programs for it. If you're a programmer, have at it. If you're not a programmer like me, you can go through programming school and learn how to write your own programs, do whatever you want. It's yours. You own it. It's your computer, which is really, really cool. So that's the operating system side of the equation. The other side of the equation is the identity layer. Because going back to when we're in meet space, I know it's you, you know it's me, easy to authenticate. But for the internet as it is right now, with IP addresses that you can drop and use another one right away, it's nearly impossible to know that I'm really talking to you. It might be somebody else. You might be catfishing me. I don't know. It's really tough to authenticate. And that's why the Urbit identity system is really neat. So the identity system is kind of like there are 4.2 billion of these identities on the network. And that's all that there'll ever be really that we can get down that rabbit hole in future videos as well. But just bear with me. Imagine that there are just 4.2 billion and that's it. So you could burn through identities, but then it becomes too expensive to keep that behavior up. And whereas currently Twitter or Facebook or whatever authenticates your identity by an email and a password. Well, now that we live in a Web3 kind of future, we can now have addresses, Ethereum addresses, Bitcoin wallet addresses, and we can sign information with zero proof knowledge and all that kind of stuff. And I want to get into more of what that means in future videos. But basically, we don't just have to rely on usernames and passwords anymore. We can rely on cryptographic proof 
of ownership as the verification that I am the owner of this computer. So what's kind of neat is that you buy an NFT that is the identity, and it's also the key that allows you to compute your computer into existence. And one of the first things that your Urbit as a computer knows about itself is its name. It's at a super fundamental level, which makes it incredibly difficult, if not impossible as of today, to spoof that identity. So if you've got control of this wallet that owns this NFT, that is your key to your Urbit operating system that you can run anywhere. And your security of that identity is as secure as you are comfortable managing your wallet that controls the, the universal master key of your NFT. So that causes some confusion that people think that Urbit is just an NFT project or it's some kind of shit coin or something like that. But really, it touches the blockchain as a ledger for which address owns which Urbit identity. And that's how you verify that you own the computer and you can access it that way. The result is that this identity at the fundamental layer of this computer, of this server, of this network node, means that you've got an identity that can last for as long as you want to hold on to that NFT. So this single identity becomes your address. It's the address that somebody puts in to DM you. So if you would like to DM me on the network, you would just type in DM Minderfolden and that would come to me. And it's the address, it's the name, it's the identity, it's everything all wrapped up in one, which makes it really elegant and cool to have an identity that enables you to navigate a completely new network and build a community without having to give up your real name. Now, I do that here on this channel. I am publicly Minderfolden on the network and on Twitter and on Facebook with all of my friends. They know I talk about this weird thing called Urbit and that Minderfolden is somehow connected to me, but that's kind of why I want to make these videos to help them understand what in the world am I talking about all the time. So, whatever weird name you get, very soon you wind up identifying with it. And the result is kind of like, I heard it explained once, like if some company bought Facebook, bought Twitter, bought Google, bought every online platform and rolled it all into one, but you were the company that did it, and suddenly all that data is yours in one profile in one platform, you now don't need to remember what password, what email address did I use on here and over here. You've got one identity that now gets you access to everything on the network. It's all unified and it's cool because you own the data. It's not some other company that has bought all these other platforms and keeping you as a user and as a client to their server. Instead, you own the server. You're in control. It's your data. It's under your control. It's, it's just really cool. So that is kind of what it is. And then uh, what it looks like and how it works and all that kind of stuff I want to go into in future videos. But for this last detail, I want to talk about the difference between kind of what what Urbit is today and what it can be tomorrow, because a lot of folks get confused about which one you are talking about. And I got on the network about four years ago when it was command line only. I didn't know what command line meant. I had to figure it out and I eventually got on the network and I got into some chat rooms and I would change chat rooms based on glyphs. And I'm not a computer science guy. I don't have a computer engineering degree. In fact, I'm an art major in college and a performer by profession. 
So I'm not that bright and I still figured it out four years ago when it was even more difficult to use. As it stands today, again, the most built out element of this is the ability to create a group that have all your friends there. And as the owner of the group, you can have admins, you can set up different roles. Then you could have different chat rooms for different roles. You could have a shared blog. It's called a notebook where people can write and comment. And you could also have different kind of channel where you keep track of those links that I mentioned earlier. And that is the shared community toolkit that you've got uh, from day one when you're on Urbit. And it's really cool. It's built out. It's good to go right now. And like I mentioned, there are developers building new programs, new apps every day. It's open source. So there are thousands of people working on this to make it more useful, more interesting, and more capable. So if you're interested about all this kind of thing, but you're not ready to run your own server yet, but you think this might be the answer to all the issues I have with all the other uh, platforms online, then shoot me a, a note, send me a message or a comment because I want to get some of these into the hands of people who want to experience life on the frontier of a brand new internet. Now, if you're already on the network and, and you aren't a part of my group already, I strongly urge you to come check it out. I've had it in one form or another for four years straight. A lot of cool people are in there, and you can find that at Mindrefolden slash Valeria city, or you could just go to Valeria.city where you can apply for citizenship. I've got a whole bunch of different districts, and I love sharing all the business skills and public speaking skills and all sorts of tips, tricks, techniques, and insights that I don't even get into here on YouTube. So come find me there. Um, if you've got more questions about what Urbit is, how it works, or anything like that, drop that in the comments too, because I would love to make more videos like this that go into more detail about all the different elements of what Urbit is. And to wrap this up with a bow, Urbit is so big a project that has so many moving pieces that it can be difficult to see the whole picture at one glance. So that's why it can be really difficult to explain what in the world it is. So if this piqued your interest, let me know, like the video, so that way it'll tell YouTube to get this out to more people. And uh, if you haven't yet, I strongly suggest that you subscribe to my channel for future videos. And in the meantime, if you're not ready for that kind of commitment, I strongly suggest that you check out this video. And I always like to say, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.